Hello and welcome to a new video. I have not done a one take wrap up in a little bit um, so I'm here to do a one take wrap up of everything I read in May and June and I actually feel like I had some pretty good reading months in May and June. Um, I just didn't have time to film wrap ups because I was either traveling or working or I was sick so had a busy time but I'm here to wrap up everything um, and catch up on all of that. So let's get into it because I've got quite a few to get through. So I left off um, in May. I read a Spider-Man comic. I read Miles Morales Spider-Man Trial by Spider by Cody Ziegler. This was a lot of fun. I gave it a five out of five stars. Um, it was, I wasn't sure where it got reset in the universe. That was my only like con, not really a con, but um, like both his parents were alive and he had another, he had a, a like a baby sibling and I'm like, last comic I read they were dead so this was like some sort of reset or something um but great emotional journey for Miles he really went through a lot I loved it um next I read A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem by Amanda Collins I've talked about Amanda, Amanda Collins quite a few times before I adore her she's one of my favorite historical romance authors she writes incredible blue stocking um characters female characters and they're just so fun to read um my prose brilliant characters amazing chemistry blue stocking heroine um like such a fun like crime solving plot that was just so fun to read um a hint of spice but nothing too crazy my con was that it was like a really slow beginning but then it made it up for it by the end so five out of five stars let's see the good guides girls wait the good girl's guide to rakes I think I mix whatever but evilly um I read this one it was a lot of fun um pros were lessons um like he was giving her lessons on how to seduce a man I always love that I think it's a fun trope especially in historical um she fell first but he fell harder loved that and then they talked a lot about like women's freedom to do what they want to work all of that in this book and I really really liked that um not many cons but the plot was a little bit slow sometimes but I loved the um the heroine had this like really interesting hobby she loved to cook and like was really really good at it like high profile like fancy restaurant cooking um and I just thought that was really fun so I enjoyed that a lot um and I gave that a five out of five stars next I read Out on a Limb by Hannah Boehm Young this is probably gonna be one of the top books in the year for me I really really enjoyed this one I gave it a five out of five stars prose one of the best books I've read this year great characters great communication it is a surprise pregnancy which we all know is one of my favorite tropes I had a lot of fun with it um they have a really um incredibly written like physical disability rep for both of them she was born with um a deformity in her hand and then he lost his he had an amputation of his leg um due to cancer so some um trigger warnings for that kind of stuff but it was so incredibly well written i loved the conversations around it how it influenced their um like fears and excitement and like all their emotions going into like parenthood really really loved it the only thing and i've said this with many other um pregnancy trope books before is it didn't go all the way through the pregnancy like it gets to a certain point and then the book ends and it jumps to the epilogue and like they have five kids or whatever i'm like i just i want to see all of it i want to go through the whole story and they always skip the end like the pregnancy and the birth and everything but still a very 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 good book next i read when no one is watching by Alyssa cole um i i need to stop i don't think i even rated this i i didn't i need to stop reading thrillers thinking i'm going to like thrillers I d i'm not gonna like it i'm not gonna like thrillers i don't i've never read one that i liked actually that's a lie the one by ashley flowers i liked um every single other thriller I've ever tried I have not liked I need to stop um this is it this is my last one I'm not doing it again I just wrote that um I'm not writing this book because I don't think it was for me and that like I shouldn't have even tried I should not have read it um the writing quality was fine I guess um 
I was just literally so bored the entire time and at like page 100 I was like should I DNF this but I had chosen I had chosen it why did I do that for my book club my in-person book club and I was like I need to just commit I need to read um and I should have DNF'd it um it was so boring so yeah I, I don't I couldn't even tell you what it was about it was dumb I was bored whatever next I read a Carnage comic Carnage Reigns by Alex pa Pac Nadell um I didn't write a review for this weird um but I gave it five stars it was fun Carnage is scary this is my first Carnage comic but it was um overlapping with Miles so in that series so that's why I read it um he's spooky but Cletus he's he's a crazy guy he's he's a spooky guy he's scary um but yeah loved it had fun um next I'm just getting through these I read Book Lovers by Emily Henry this was a fun one I think if we're comparing Emily Henry's for me so far I liked Beach Read better but Book Lovers was good um my pros lovable characters really really loved the small town setting um great banter and chemistry between the main characters it was like a loose enemies to lover but um they weren't really enemies um but my cons and this was my con last time too um her characters need to go to therapy what's going on why do these characters bottle everything up just for it all to explode like do why don't they have therapists that like it's it seems like a pretty simple solution like this she should have identified a lot earlier on like hey I'm unhappy I'm questioning everything in my life I am stressed all the time she can't sleep at all maybe I should get a therapist um also the the plot was a little bit slow overall but it was okay um and then this was like more of a personal preference. I think some other people would call like count this as a pro rather than me counting it as a con. But Nora, the main character, also Nora, that's the name we're going with. Um, but she is such a city person. She's always talking about New York and how much she loves the city and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, whoa, bored by that. I liked the small town setting so much more um so i was just very bored by how much she was praising the city she's like yeah it smells like trash but i love it i'm like well, why do you love it if it smells like trash but anyway um yeah i was way more interested in the small town part but yeah and then the other thing was the sister whose name i can't remember she was she was annoying me um by the end like just just talk just tell your plan of what you're doing you don't have to keep everything a secret and make go on this big elaborate trip and all this but yeah that could have been solved with a therapist okay next practice makes perfect by sarah adams now i know i said out in a limb was my favorite book of the year but actually practice makes perfect was my favorite book of the year i don't think anything's gonna beat it this is it this is the book and i should have known sarah adams like she does it again um i've loved every single book i've read of hers they're just fantastic um i think i literally just i love it so much the main character annie um this is a sequel to when in rome so in when in rome the celebrity girl breaks down in this small town in rome kentucky um and falls in love with this guy this is the sister of the guy one of the sisters he has three sisters so i presuming we're gonna get all their romances but um she was like I swear sometimes I said this with when in Rome too so I think honestly just Sarah Adams and I would get along well but I would I joked that like I swear she, does she have cameras on me is she reading my mind like the way she writes these characters I just really really deeply relate to um so I really I love this um like her romance her her hero was amazing it was the bodyguard of the celebrity um so one we got a bodyguard romance we've got like um a sweet virgin heroine we have um lessons um fake dating like all all this like just incredible fun stuff but like on a deeper level below that she writes these like really well-rounded serious emotional female characters that have so much complexity to them like 
they are they are real people she she's just amazing i love sarah adams i'm sarah adams fan club president these books are amazing um my con was how do i follow this up which i stand by that i haven't followed it up yet so <laughs> Next, I read Remember Arizona by Rebecca Sharp, Dr. Rebecca Sharp. Um, I really loved this book. I was taking a trip to the Grand Canyon and I thought this is the perfect thing to read on my phone for this like long drive. So I've read, this is my fifth Rebecca Sharp book now this year. I am loving her books. They are so fun. Um, I read all of her like suspense romance series. Um, a couple months ago and loved those. This is not a romantic suspense, but it is a really fun friends to lovers, well like second chance friends to lovers romance. Um, they like almost went there when they were 18, but he ended up kind of like ghosting her for his own personal family trauma. Um, and so she left, she moved to New York and tried to like put it behind her. But then she finds out that her boyfriend is cheating on her. Um, but he's an artist and she still has to curate his show here back here in Arizona. So um, she gets her ex friend to pretend to be a to pretend to be her new boyfriend um, because she doesn't want to deal with her ex-boyfriend so um, obviously creates a lot of awkward tension um, but it's so great it was a fun quick read but like still had a really great emotional depth to it and it takes place in Arizona which I never get to read so I had a lot of fun with that um, next I read Today Tonight and Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon I really loved this one I will say first trigger warning for drug use in this book that I did not expect it was on page um didn't love that wish that had been left out but pros a great banter a really fun like enemies to lovers although sometimes when there's enemies to lovers in this setting that's like a competition because uh like competition in school or like that kind of thing I don't get because I don't have a single competitive bone in my body so I'm like why do you care um not the point though. Um, a really great like emotional development for the characters though. These are characters who are doing like celebrating their senior night. They're about to graduate um, high school. I didn't really get the, the game they were playing. They had this like huge elaborate scavenger hunt across the entire city. Um, that can't be real. That can't be real. There, there cannot be high schools out here doing shit like this. Not mine. I didn't do any we didn't do anything for seniors so I just thought that was the whole concept was weird um, but that just chalk that up to YA um, my biggest con was that the main character's name was Neil a YA love interest and you named him Neil that's disgusting um, I'm sorry if your name is Neil but yeah um, anyway um, and then I liked the characters and I liked them developing and learning each other and all of that I just struggled with the main character a little bit. She, her vibe, it was one of those books that's a YA book that I can tell was written by an adult, you know? Um, like Becky Abertelli, my girl, I love her. But like, it's the same like vibe. Like I can tell that this is someone who's trying to like be young, but like is not. <laughs> like not that she's old but you know what I mean like it just didn't feel like a high schooler um the main character she dressed questionably I it and at first when I was reading I'm like oh this book must be from like 2016 no this book was from like 2020 or 2021 um and she was wearing 2016 outfits they were horrible I don't even want to affront your memory with them um and then like her music taste and like her book taste and her whole vibe i'm like i'm sorry the like manic pixie dream girl we need to put it to rest it is the worst trope out there just let it go and she was just a little bit much on that front but i still really really enjoy the characters and i do plan on reading the sequel so i gave it a five star still 4.5 um next i read the lady gets lucky by joanna shoop I love, you know what, I think earlier I called my book Seduction Lessons. This was the Seduction Lessons, the Eva Lee book. I don't think that was Seduction Lessons. I actually don't remember what that book was about. I don't, I'm complete, I think I got it confused with this one. And I went on about the cooking. That happened in this book. I don't know what that Eva Lee book was about. I think that was still a Seduction Stories. It was the one where she dressed up. 
like she put a wig on and dressed up. There just was no cooking. The cookies, the cooking is in this one. <laughs> I don't remember what that girl was into. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm not very good at giving reviews, obviously. Anyway, pros for the lady gets lucky. Um, the main character, Kit, love him. Love him. He's fantastic. Also, love the name Kit. That's unrelated. Um, this is another she fell first, he fell harder. Seduction lessons are in this one. I don't know what was in the other one. Maybe it was also lessons. Who knows? Um, this one has a really great sense of humor. Joanna Shoup always has a really great sense of humor. Um, and then my con is going to have to break my book buying ban to buy the next one um, because I need to read the Duke story as soon as possible. Um, so the thing about this series so far, I still haven't bought this book, so actually I didn't buy my book. I did not break my book buying ban, but I will be going to the bookstore today, so we'll see. Um, my in these first two books in this series so in the first one she is like ki kind of engaged or engaged to the duke and then she breaks it off because she has to marry her friend because they're caught in a compromising position and then in this one he is starting to the duke is starting to show some interest in this girl and she's like okay you know this is what i was doing this for i was getting lessons so i could seduce a man and get out of her family's house um but then she leaves she you know rejects the dukes to go with this with the main guy um and so this poor duke has been rejected twice and i just want him to have a happily ever after too um so i really want to read his story um so this was a five stars it's a joanna shoot book I, of course i loved it we're almost there we're almost there okay the irish fall by brooke gilbert this was a book i read um in exchange for review um i listened to the audiobook so um her books, I read one a couple months ago too, um, she really tries to include physical um, disability representation. Um, so this has endometriosis, esophageal Crohn's, chronic pain, chronic disease, arthritis, um, gluten um, intolerance or like allergy or just food allergies in general and PTSD. So really, really liked that aspect of it. Um, pros loved the setting of the Irish um like countryside it was this girl who f kind of freaked out um got on a plane went to ireland um because she didn't know what else to do with her life um and she falls in love with her tour guide so the other pros it's a really sweet romance it's friends to lovers it's not um it's closed door like it's very sweet and then um i really really liked th there is on page panic attack that I would count that as a trigger warning, um, but it was really, really well written. I liked it a lot. Um, cons, the insta-love was a little strong. Don't get me wrong, I love an insta-love, but it was like, you guys are strangers. You just met. And it's always like, I just feel like I can trust him. Based on what? He could be a serial killer for all you know. But anyway, he wasn't. <laughs> um, let's see. And then I had this issue with her last book as well. It's just too long. It's like 500 pages, 450 pages. It's too long for a contemporary romance. Um, it doesn't need to be dragged out that far. But I really liked the cast of characters. I liked the setting. I liked the romance. I still gave it a four stars. Um, I'm running 20 minutes behind. I was supposed to leave 20 minutes ago, so I need to talk faster. I started a new cozy mystery series. Um, this is Sprinkle with Murder by Jen McKinley. So I'm just going to give kind of a overarching summary of the series because I've read like the first four already. Um, so this is about a girl who owns a cupcake bakery in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was so excited when I started reading it and realized it took place in Arizona because like I said before, I never get to read books that take place in Arizona. So that I really, really loved. Um, there are two girls, best friends, who own this bakery shop. Um, and then their other best friend is an investor in the bakery shop. Um, and it's just been so much fun. They are solving mysteries that they have no business solving which i love because it's a cozy mystery um lots of murders have been happening in this first one it is their friends the investor his fiance gets murdered um and they're realizing like did you even want to be engaged to her and like all of that and they're realizing what a horrible person she was not that she deserved to be murdered but um i will say in this first one i didn't experience these in the other ones in the first one one there was some like questionable 
2010s like fat phobic comments and like some questionable LGBT comments but this book is from 2010 I believe um so like I took it with a grain of salt this is you know the time of glee so um and the other thing was I just if you're gonna write mystery books and you're going to have murder in them like research um the the murder weapon this isn't i'm not counting this as a spoiler the murder weapon was one single fentanyl patch and look i know that i'm like coming from a space because i'm a nurse like i get kind of picky sometimes with these things um but one single fentanyl patch it's not gonna kill someone unless you're putting it on like a baby or you're, you'd have to use multiple patches. But the way patches work is it, it is extended release. Even if you're somehow, you somehow get it to release more than it should. Like if you apply heat, like a lot of heat or something to it, there's still really not enough fentanyl in it to like kill a normal healthy woman. Um, and I was like, okay, well maybe it's multiple patches because that could overdose someone. But it wasn't. It specifically described one patch. And I was like huh like and I was like looking it up in like a pharmacy database I'm like what's the highest dose of fentanyl patch that there is and even at the highest dose I just don't think that would kill a normal woman like a normal grown woman so that was that's me being picky oh and the other thing was they described she called her uncle who was a cop on the and like on the uh, case it's like get the ME to test for fentanyl test for opioids and the the uncle was like yeah I, I will that's not like normal in tox screen what do you mean opioids isn't normal in the tox screen for an for a murder investigation I yeah um, look I'm not a cop I'm just I'm not I'm a nurse but like <laughs> I've watched a lot of Criminal Minds and I s and Bones and lots of crime shows and I s I'm pretty sure they test for opioids in a murder investigation. Anyway, I also read Buttercream Bump Off, Death by the Dozen, and Red Velvet Revenge. All of these books were great. The murder weapons in the subsequent books were less ridiculous. Um, I'm really liking the development between characters. The um, main character, Mel, is dating her best friend, Angie's brother. Love that. Um, and then there is something beginning to brew between Angie and Tate, which is the other, their friend, the investor friend. So having a lot of fun. And there's a lot of fun secondary characters. They hired this teenager that works there. Um, and this, like, old guy who's, like just kind of started appearing there um and they're like well might as well hire him um so it's been lots of fun i definitely will keep re i'm gonna re there's like 12 books in the series i'm gonna devour the whole thing um lastly now that i've been talking for 23 minutes um i read the rule book by sarah adams this is a sequel to the cheat sheet which is the first sarah adams book i read years ago um i did like this one but i did not love this one um i think part of it is like my reading mood kind of affected how I liked this book but I still really liked it it was a second chance romance um, it was a marriage of convenience which I did really like and they had a lot of good chemistry and banter um, but I just think it was a little bit slower than all of her other books and it didn't really like force me to like propel forward and want to keep reading um, it was just a little bit slow but it's still a 4.5 stars. I still loved it. Um, I'm so sick of talking, so I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. That was my one take wrap up for May and June. I don't even know how many books that was. You can count them if you want. I will see you guys next time. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. I said that twice. Bye.